You're watching Escape It All Hood Live, your number one source for long-lasting, fast-acting, physician-approved adultitis relief. On this week's show, we're talking about Funky Chickens, Jason's new series of paintings, and our secret to being persistent. Greetings and salutations. This episode is brought to you by people like Elle Hendricks, Joy Almond, and John Mavrakis. Their membership in the Wonder and Whimsy Society supports us in this work to fight adultitis. Good evening, everyone. Yes, if you'd like to annihilate the adultitis in your life, learn more about the Wonder and Whimsy Society or just be among the first to know about our newest offerings, become an insider at escapeitalhood.com slash subscribe. Happy Wednesday. Please do that. I love hearing about... You guys' favorite places and things to do. <sighs> ice cream by Tracy. Yes, I will always meet you for ice cream, Tracy, anytime. Yeah. We asked, what would be something you would like to do every day for the rest of your life? Yes. And uh, yeah, eating ice cream is enjoyable. Christy, napping. Alive. Yes. Yes. Always a nap. Being in a forest and breathe fresh air surrounded by plants and animals. Yes. <laughs> beach, please, <laughs> says Rachel. Sit on the beach with my kids. All weather, just kids and water needed. By the way, we love your profile picture. That's such yeah, a good picture that's a good one. of you, Rachel. Hello, Tyler. Funky chicken, chickens sound fun. Indeed, we've got funky right? chickens ahead. Say that three times fast. Uh, no, because I <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> we are now banned from Facebook, apparently. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, so we had, a, we had a good day today. We were in the Milwaukee area doing a program for Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yes. Uh, we staff love there. the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yes. So got to encourage them. We talked to them about finding their happy places. It's been a trying couple years for them. Lots of disappointed families, you know, with mm -hmm. not being able to do travel wishes and restrictions and blah, blah, blah. But the most important part is that I think they got some new tools, right? I hope so. And yeah. we were kind of talking about what we talked about a little bit tonight. It's like, where's your happy place? What do you love? What could you do for the rest of your life? And do more of that, right? Yeah, uh, including... Uh, sitting in a warm hot tub. Oh, that sounds like a good, good plan. Yes. Uh, I could go for that once a day. Any weather, mm -hmm. just like with Rachel on the beach, right? Yep, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we're glad that you're with us tonight. We've got some fun things ahead. If you have a chance and are willing to uh, share this on your timeline to let other people know about it, we appreciate it. We're going to be talking about what some people have called our secret superpower, which is <laughs> persistence. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I've always called it stubbornness, but I well, like the positive yeah, slant. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, so we're going to share uh, really the secret behind it. And it's not that big of a secret, but might be uh, something to get you thinking. We will be uh, talking about funky chickens in a little bit here and some other fun surprises along the way. So uh, we're glad to have you with us tonight. But, you know, let's get to this uh, funky chicken thing and it to has dance? to do yes uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it has to do with uh some new paintings that are coming out of my studio yes. uh kind of by necessity would you say that'd be yes. a good way to set it up yeah and i don't think we actually say this in the sneak peek that jason's getting a new studio build out yes. right and it, somehow in january they dug a hole in our our yard and poured some cement magically and um so it's getting close to there's wood there's wood in our backyard now so close to being built so yes. that's kind of what's happening a little uh, setup for this one okay huh, yeah all right what you got going here well, I've got an interesting challenge because we are uh, excited that the studio construction is about to begin in full force in about a week or so. So that means there will be construction, there will be pounding, nailing, and this entire wall will be ripped out. And so uh, I'm going to be a little uh, studio-less, as, as, as it were. Uh, for an undetermined amount of time. So I've been thinking a lot about that and what it mostly means is that I can't do any of my bigger paintings with my big easel. So I'm trying to think of uh, something different to do so that I can maintain my practice. I've, I don't have it with me right there, but my, uh, my 400 hours I'm trying to get in. I don't want that to uh, slide during this renovation. So 
Uh, I was trying to think of something I could do portably, I guess, uh, whether it's at the kitchen table or a different room in the house. And so I'm going to be doing a series of smaller paintings and I'm kind of, from my own head, I'm calling the, the series Renovations. And what I'm basically using the opportunity to do is to do more experimental things, to practice um, with new brush stroke styles, practice colors, basically trying to renovate my style in a way, renovate my skills, uh, grow. And it's really hard to do that when I'm, I'm doing one of my more traditional paintings because it takes a lot of time and I wanna mess it up. But these smaller ones allow me to uh, play a little bit. And uh, if it doesn't work out, it's only a couple hours if that. Uh, so I wanted to show you a couple of them that I have going so far. Oh man, I love this one. Uh, this is a, a crazy chicken, uh, which I love, inspired by Key West. And this, uh, one of the other things that I'm doing is I'm only using a limited palette. Now mm -hmm. you look at this and it seems like, well, it seems like there's a lot of colors on there. There were actually only five colors that what? I used in this huh. plus white. Um, so that's kind of part of the challenge is to, uh, create a unified painting by limiting the number of colors that I have. Hmm. So here's another one. You can see this one, this draft one, this is dry, but um, wow. you can see me playing all around with uh, more of a loose style, which is something I wanted to do. Uh, being more methodical which, with each brush stroke, and of course, again, to play around with color a little bit. Wow, um, it's interesting how much light you brought into this one. Um, just, I don't know how you do that, but it feels like there's like a spotlight on it. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's good. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then this one is in mid progress right now. I've got a uh, cool. red underpainting here. This is actually going to be green and this is just the first pass here at C3PO. Huh. Uh, but you can see here, these are, these are the colors that I'm using. This is the first day of the painting. So I've got, uh, do a little Bob Ross, yellow ochre. <laughs> Payne's Gray, this is one of my favorite, most uh, usable colors. Um, rich Gold, uh, Cadmium Yellow Medium, and then this Viridian Green. Huh. And uh, I'm gonna use that for the background. So C-3PO is pretty much just these four colors so wow. far with white mixed in. Huh. So I'm excited about this uh, because I have been wanting to loosen up my style a little bit uh, with a background in illustration. I tend to get really fine and detailed and stuff. And I've always been impressed by artists who are a little bit looser while still maintaining a sense of realism. So uh, this series is called Renovations and we'll see, uh, we'll see what happens as we go further. I can't wait to see more. <sighs> this is gonna be fun. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. I finished up C-3PO this afternoon. Yep, and yeah. uh, or this morning, I guess it was. Uh, so yeah, I'm I'm excited. It's kind of uh, it's kind of cool to be able to give myself the freedom to try out some new things and uh, hopefully grow a little bit. I don't know what it'll all lead to, but um, gives me a chance to to tinker around, right? Right. I also find it interesting. You often talk about in order to be creative, sometimes the best way to be creative is have constraints. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you did size here. Um, and then I did notice different, um, boards that you're using, yep. right. But, but then the limited color is mm -hmm. interesting. So I think you're going to have, that's an interesting playground to kind of stir the pot a little bit. Yeah. Uh, everyone, I have kind of like a different, uh, thing I'm focusing on. So the C3PO one was really trying to think about how can I make something look metallic while not rendering the hell out of it, like right. getting every, like to be it, let it still be uh, loose with brush strokes and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I think it, I think it turned out pretty good. But yeah, here's a here's a here's another yeah. shot of our uh, funky chicken I here. Think you the can, lighting's you can see better the colors down here. A little bit see. better. Yeah, that uh, the different. Awesome. I like how the background is with the different greens and blues mm -hmm. and purples and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's funky. I don't. That, that's a specific kind of chicken. I don't know what it's called. That it's called a funky chicken. Has that? Yeah, that's the scientific funky. name. But, uh, I think you <laughs> I love Jim Kramer. Good to see you tonight, Jim. Um, journey versus destination, right? Mm, Isn't that yeah. all of art and creativity? It's like just having fun with it and we'll see where it goes, right? Uh, yeah, how about uh, the stricken chicken? 
Chicken, chicken. I almost like got electrocuted. Uh, Paul said it was what uh, his hair looked like the past week. So, hey. uh, I More power to you. Can't relate to that. But uh, yeah, so I just want to share that with you. Uh, we'll see where it leads, but it's kind of fun to uh, take you into the studio every once in a while. It's been a while. So. I think that we will probably be, I think we should do more studio sneak peeks as the renovation happens with the idea of like peeking at what's happening out there. Yeah, so it'll actually... be kind of fun to take you on that journey with us. Yeah, it'll be fun. And now a word from our sponsors. Well, it's fitting that Dave Timmerman is here because he's uh, our uh, he's our poster boy here for tonight's our model. Uh, Escape It All Hood Summit. <laughs> and uh, the thing that a lot of people talk to us about with when it comes to the Escape It All Hood Summit and this tribe in general is like, I found my people. Uh, I think uh, a lot of a lot of folks are all about fighting adultitis. Oh, no. They are all about not taking themselves too seriously. Uh, they buy in. They get they get the concept. But the problem is they may be on an island. They may be the only one in their family or uh, group at work who has that mentality. And sometimes they can be made to feel like maybe they're broken or something's wrong with them, or they need to be serious or grow up or whatever you, if you can relate to this, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And that's one of the cool things about the Escape at Allhood Summit is the opportunity to find your people and to, to just feel like you belong and you can be comfortable being yourself, right? Yeah, I think we, it took a while for us to figure out like, what is the common denominator of all these people? And I think it really is as simple as saying, it's someone who honors their childlike spirit. And so, and that doesn't mean you had an awesome childhood. It doesn't mean, you know, like we all come from interesting backgrounds. We all have our stories and sometimes the scars um, help us to appreciate that childlike spirit even more. Um, but I think it's so cool when you get these people in a room mm -hmm. like the summit, because it really isn't a circus. I mean, I always say that because yeah. people are like, oh, is it just, you know, you get you get throwing yourself against the wall with Velcro or something like Velcro walls or something, which could be fun. But um, <laughs> we have not done that. Um, but you guys, Yet. those of you who are here uh, live with us tonight, throw up in the comments. Like, what about this community has served you, has um, helped you grow? Because uh, they're pretty special people. Yeah, I like Jennifer has said this uh, before, the family yeah. we choose. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we all come from different backgrounds, have different families. Some of us have great families. Some of us have not so great families. Some of us really have no family on right. of circumstances. Some of us have a mixed bag of family. But this is kind of an opportunity to, to, to hang out with the family you choose. And uh, man, what a supportive group of people it is. Yes. Uh, for sure. Last night we hosted a monthly mastermind for Wonder and Whimsy Society and uh, it was all about having more fun at work. And we talked a lot about burnout and um, a lot of different deeper topics and it's just such a great group of people. And many of them uh, are going to be here at the uh, the summit. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I hope that you can, you can join us. Uh, let's see. Jennifer says, I feel at home all the time mm -hmm. and I can be the true me, which is great to hear that. Uh, that kind of sums it up. Yeah. So if you are interested in joining us, we're going to be in Park City this year, Park City, Utah, uh, August 1st and 2nd. Tickets are disappearing. Golden tickets. You, you need to get it. I, I know I've been saying this, but we're getting down to the wire here. Um, hope you can uh, you can join us. Learn more at EscapeItAllHoodSummit.com. And if you bring a friend, a partner in crime, you get a get a partner in crime discount. Let's right? see what Rachel said there and put that up. Summit is full of people who are genuinely interested in your story and what makes you, you. Mm -hmm. The most interested and interesting people ever make you feel seen and Aww. included. That's Amen. really nice to say. Rachel yes. was at, last year was her first Escape World at Summit. Yep. And, um, and we made her work it. That was I know, so mean it was of us. Kind of a, <laughs> it's unfortunate, but had to be done. Uh, but no, I, it, that's really nice uh, that you guys would... Uh, would say that oh um tracy i see that tracy says oh, sharing yeah. creative ideas for having mm -hmm. fun yep tracy's been to a number of them um unrelated note steve is here from houston miss being with you live on Aww. wednesdays we've missed you as well steve we're glad you, you could be with us tonight yes um and so if you're watching this if you are looking for your people this year they're going to be in park city <laughs> And uh, August first and second. We hope that you'll be able to join us. Check out escapeitallhoodsummit.com. Life moves pretty fast. 
you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. My parents recently hosted us for a uh, birthday dinner. And in Kim's card, my dad had written something about us being the most persistent people he knew. Kim smiled because we know how close a cousin persistent is to stubborn, which is a synonym for unreasonable, pig-headed, and cantankerous. But we took it for the compliment it was intended to be. Persistence, stubbornness, an abundance of stick to whatever you want to call it, we definitely have it. It's uh, what allowed us to keep going for 20 years before making it to our dream home on Lake Michigan. For years, we endured literally years of financial loss, crushing debt, the disappointing results of failed plans, and excruciating stretches of time when momentum was harder to find than Waldo and a candy cane factory. That persistence served us well. It may have been our superpower, but it never seemed all that special to me. Maybe because I know the secret. Now, there were many times I wanted to wave the white flag, but whenever it felt like the jig was up, bankruptcy was looming, I just assured myself that all this didn't work out, Kim could always go back to teaching. I could always get a corporate job or manage a fast food place somewhere. We'd be fine. And then I'd think about how terrible that would be if I had to do that for the next 20 or 30 years. And then I'd get back to work on the thing that excites me. Because moving forward suddenly wasn't as hard or hopeless or impossible as it seemed. In considering the alternatives, I was reminded that I had a choice. Even now, when I'm in the middle of hosting a one-man woe-is-me pity party about how difficult I have it, how much this sucks, and how I don't think I want to do this anymore, I call a timeout. I reflect back to the summers of my teenage years when I worked at a car dealership and during long days doing work that didn't excite me. I remember how slow the clock moved as I counted down the minutes to freedom. I recall the pangs of dread that settled in on Sunday nights. That job is where I learned I'm unemployable. It's when I made the choice that I was going after my dream no matter how hard the road or how long it took. And that promise persistence was born. Now, this is not a message about never quitting, which is sometimes the wisest course of action. It's about reminding ourselves that quitting is only one of the options. Adultitis prefers us playing the victim card. It very much enjoys us feeling powerless and without any choices. But we always have choices. We put adultitis' panties in a bunch when we play the perspective card. When we look at how far we've already come, or take an honest accounting of all of the options at our disposal while realizing how many of them are worse than our current situation, we can pull ourselves from the pit of hopelessness. Laying all the choices out on the table can help remind us that we are on the right road after all. Sometimes being faced with a less desirable scenario immediately brings to mind some new thing we can try in our present situation. I'm sure there's a little bit of persistence involved and a dash of needing to be my own boss, but mostly the thing that kept me going was simply reframing my situation. What's the secret to being persistent? How do you keep going when you really want to throw in the towel? You simply remind yourself of all the choices and why keep going is the best one. You are definitely the king of the reframe, mm. right? I, I take that as a compliment. I, you should take it as a compliment. And I would say that I probably received the most benefit out of that being in your day-to-day -day life. But luckily you do share those thoughts with others as well. But the idea of like, okay, this could be worse, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Uh, which instantly puts everything in perspective. So I love that about you. Thank you. I appreciate yes. that. But yeah, I... Going back to the Cheesemans, which is the name of the car dealership that I worked at, I, I do that a lot when I am wake up in the morning and I'm like, Ugh, like wh whatever's on the schedule that I don't want to do. And I got to tell you, I think about like, well, it could be this or it could be that or my health could be this or whatever. And it's like, oh, yeah, I I would rather do this. And and, and the idea that it's hard, I like. Uh, I know I saw it. Father Dave, Dave said, yeah. Father Stu said, we shouldn't mm -hmm. pray for an easy life, but the strength to endure 
a difficult one. And I love that because we do all have uh, challenges that pop up in our lives from time to time and day to day. And we have to, uh, the fact that we have them is not a, not necessarily a sign that we're doing life wrong or that it's, uh, we need to bail or give up. Um, sometimes we just need to dig a little deeper and, um, review the alternatives and realize maybe this isn't the worst path uh, after all. Yeah, there's a very um, inspiring young lady who was on uh, the, what's the one with the buzzers and the... the Jeopardy? No. Family Feud? No, the one with all the talent. Um, and America's Got yes, Talent. The yeah. Voice. <laughs> you go all night. <laughs> And uh, she recently passed away from cancer, but she got really famous for the song that she sang and kind of kept advancing with it. Her her name had Bird in it. I think if Helen Meiser's on tonight, I learned about her from you. Um, but she recently passed away, so her um, her little memes are going all over the place like a month ago, probably. But her big thing was like, you don't wait until your, your life is easy to be happy. And that was her big thing, which, of course, coming from someone fighting cancer... It really bears a lot of Night weight. Bird, Helen Night says. bird, thank you, Helen. Yes, and her song. We have it's okay. Yep, that's mm -hmm. the song to Google, you guys. It's and her story is is just that. It's like I have I have to be happy today because that's all I have, right? And so that shift, and, yeah. And so it kind of bears a lot of weight when you're hearing it from someone battling such a hard yeah. cross, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Thank you for for sharing that, Helen. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I think last, last week we got a little bit, um, we got sabotaged a little bit by adultitis bit. and our technology uh, as we mm -hmm. tried to do a segment that is possibly the most popular segment on the show. Um, but I think we're going to give it another try this week. Technology, Get your crayons, technology. <laughs> colored pencils, markers. Let's draw. Hey. All right, let's see. Oh, yeah, we're in business, she oh, yeah. said, as the iPad crashed. We're draw all me. night, you guys. All right, so this is, uh, we're going to we're gonna do some, uh, yeah, do something kind of fun tonight. I really got to come up with a better opening line because I said, we're going to draw something terrible tonight. Oh. Um, <laughs> no, that's not right either. Uh, draw along. We, we beg of you to not just watch, participate. Just watching, that's... You, you got us. something nearby. Join you got us, a pen. Right? You got a post-it note. You got a bill that came in the mail that you can draw on. Bonus points if you draw on the actual bill that you <laughs> mail in to the cable company or whatever. That'd be awesome. All right. So here's where we're going to start out. Uh, we're going to start out with a, a shape. Now, this is going to be one of those nights where uh, any shape you draw, the, the little quirkiness is just going to add to it. So don't get too caught up in drawing it exactly the way I do it because that's where the creativity is going to come in. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to draw kind of like a, a little shape like that. Okay. Yours can be wider. There you go. It's wider, thinner, whatever. Now I'm going to draw a uh, triangle like that. Okay. And uh, we're going to put two circles. If one is a little bigger than the other. That's fine. And uh, I'm going to draw some pupils in here. These are going to be eyes. And I'm going to draw them like they're like cross-eyed a little uh -huh. bit. Just because that makes it fun. But you can have them look in whatever direction you want them to look. And then uh, down here, we're going to draw a little, uh, little line like that. And then bring it up like that. Like a little, little heart. gobble. Yeah, it's kind of like a heart, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And then maybe we'll do another little bump on the other side. A little bump out. A little bump out. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to draw another uh, circle around the eyes. Like that. By the way, can I make a new rule that if you're not drawing, you have to share the video? Hmm. <laughs> Give you some to do. Right. Right. <laughs> All right, we're going to draw this little beak in here and put, oh. put a little line there. Oh, this is funny. <laughs> and then uh, this is another kind of a freelance thing. We're going to we're gonna draw in some feathers down here. That Just watch kind of how I do this. And just see how I'm kind of just random. Just kind of do some random. random. Look, it's like amazing. <laughs> That's 
that's not random. That's like 25 years of it. illustration. It's <laughs> and see yours. I think Aww. yours will look just as good. And yours as well. Oh. Look at that's great. See? Great. Okay. Now is where we get to the funky part. Okay, so I'm gonna give you this is this is where it's you can go crazy with it. So if you want to watch a couple a couple different techniques that you could use. So one thing that is really easy um, is to draw like a line and then a, a, a sharp with a sharp corner there and then bring this back up. So this is a little bit of the uh, something about Mary feather, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. Um, oh, another option yeah. is to draw kind of a curved line here. And then we're going to draw a kind of a different feather by drawing uh, lines coming upward like this, right? Oh. Hmm. That's cool. Okay. The goal is to have these uh, chickens and maybe someone that knows what these chickens are actually called is a sp specific breed. I didn't realize how many Dorothy different said it. did she earlier? I didn't I didn't miss a that. A funky chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you got me. You got me. All right, and then I'm going to do another one here that's just kind of like a feather like that. All right. And then we're going to go in the a different direction. We're going to make it look bedhead. So I'm going to go like this over here. And I'm going to bring this up. It's, it almost looks like a sickle or something. And then I'm going to draw another little plume here like that. And then this is my favorite one is I'm going to draw a little loop-de-loop. Uh, -loop. Okay, oh, watch this. What? <laughs> Oh, I like the noise. You like that? It's kind of like like the picture pages. I'm going to do one on this side too. There we go. So we got our funky chicken here, and um, now it's time to add some color. Oops. And uh, I'm going to do some. Not and again, for me. Yeah, you you got uh, your colors were stolen, weren't they? Well, I borrowed the 64 box of crayons from our youngest daughter. And she borrowed them back, mm. and that's where they are. So, so that's, that's that. <laughs> Black so and white tonight. Your own things. Yep. Well, I'm gonna just color in a few things again. Perfect opportunity for you to <laughs> add your own color, oh, your own vibe. Nice. You can make it look, uh, you know, realistic colors. You can go amazing Technicolor uh, rooster chicken. I'm gonna do the little gobbler. That's probably got a name to it as well Gobbler. Um, as as is the custom here on let's draw we <laughs> only use uh the technical terms Gobbler. such as gobblers funky chicken mm -hmm. bump outs <laughs> didn't use that one tonight but the night is still young and by the way i don't think we said this at the beginning of the show that tonight is show number 90 you guys it is. so after 90 shows and I would say there's quite a, a list of terms and definitions from Let's Draw. Probably mm -hmm. ones we would laugh really hard at. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know if if we are uh, at 90 Let's Draws yeah. because we, we've we had some we've remote had some shows remote and things. Shows, However, we're right. pretty close. We're in the 80s for sure. And if you go to our YouTube channel at Escape Adulthood, there is a playlist of uh, all of the Let's draw. Yes. Also, if you go to uh, escapeatallhood.com slash live, you'll also find uh, on that page a, a playlist with all the Let's Draws. In fact, um, awesome Pete, who watches on the replay, uh, just messaged me last week with a whole bunch of sketches. He did a big catch up with his grandkids. I think he probably had them for spring break. And they did like a marathon of Let's Draws. So that was pretty rad yeah. to see all his sketches. That we may or may not see a glimpse of those oh, uh, in a little soon. bit, actually. Right. Yes. yes. So I'm just kind of adding some, adding <laughs> some uh, different colors here. Can you relate to that? Polish, What's that? A Pol Polish chicken. A Polish chicken. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, I've somehow found this like green, greenish blue marker sitting over here. So... We're just going with it here. A lot of that color. Hey, yours looks awesome. I love That's that. That's pretty funky, right? It's a little bit of an Elton John fun funky chicken here, maybe. And uh, just go a little. We may little or may not have done the chicken dance at the last summit with um, chicken hat. Definitely <laughs> did. I definitely did. Reminded by Kara Tracy. Thank you. Yep. 
All right, mm -hmm. and let's, I'm going to throw a little bit of uh, feathers here. So I'm just going to do some more of these these lines. Oh, and if cool. you tie, tie them kind of like, almost like shingles, right? Yeah. And let them overlap. I like that technique. Adds a little bit of extra flair. Would you put this as a tattoo on your body? Because uh, that would be a really cool tattoo, <laughs> right? <laughs> Who's with me? Kind of fun. Right? Are you, are you going to? I don't that's, know. Yes, that's I'm, the question. I don't know. All right. Well, you don't have the color tonight, but show people your funky chicken. Yeah, I had a marker sitting there. So yeah, I'd say that's pretty good. He's pretty fun. Uh, These... Dave wants to know if this chicken... Does this chicken lay Easter eggs? <laughs> I would love that to see it. That's question. a good question. Yes. Uh, why not? I mean, it, he looks like an Easter egg. So, Team Kim. Ah, oh, thank you, Jennifer. That's good. All right. Well, uh, yeah, so we uh, we hope that you took the time to draw with us tonight. You can always watch the replay and, and draw it later as well. But we love when you send us your creations. Uh, Jennifer Tackett is a regular contributor um, she always adds quite a bit of extra flair to the and drawing, Wonder which Marty. I love. Yeah, Marty always seems to be in it. That uh, little dog, he kind of looks like Scooby Doo to me. I don't know if that was intended, but made me kind of happy because it made me think of think of it. But here's here's cool. So last uh, week we had um, Martha Henderson and her husband Rich contributed things together. Um, they did again this week as well, but you know we're trying to spread the love, so. Uh, hope maybe we'll show theirs on a, a future show. But we did have another uh, couple uh, contribute. So although Jennifer has been a very regular contributor, her husband uh, joined in this week. Ron a stellar, so stellar job. I, I love think that it. is uh, pretty freaking adorable. Yes. If I do say so myself. So yes. thank you, the two of you, for joining and playing and all of you who sent things in. We got a couple more. Uh, Kara Tracy, so she cute. incorporated a little bit of a, a Marty the penguin into hers as well. That is an adorable. I, I love the, the design of the egg. And uh, as you mentioned, Pete Nenevasa, uh, he was doing all of them. So right? they're, they're tiny. I couldn't make them that much bigger. But you look back and we, we see several weeks worth here, even that little goat. And then here's the other side of the page. Um, Am I, I right that he drew train. a train? I don't know that I drew a train. Okay, I was like, but I he appears to have drawn a tutu on the train. Oh, so I think that's what. Did you do a train at what's all? Pretty cool. I don't think so. Okay, I think that came from somewhere else. But the snail, we did the snail. So that yeah. was uh, one of my favorite things, Pete, to see your little collection of doodles there, and uh, great, great job. So, so awesome. Um, go ahead. You're getting a lot of compliments on this shirt tonight, which does tie into oh, the Let's you. Draw. This is, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It might be easy or hard depending on the lighting, but there are sketches all over this. Yeah, sketches right? and roses, and it is one of my favorite shirts. Yeah. It's very, um, so thank you for that. Look. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So if you drew with us, send it to KJ at EscapeItAllHood.com. That stands for Kim and Jason. Yeah. Abbreviated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I hope there Fancy wasn't anyone stuff. who's like, oh, I didn't even know. I didn't it's even actually know. the email address that goes to both of us. Yes. So if you ever want to send something to both of us, just do kj at escapeadulthood.com. Yes. All right. Let's move this show along. All right, well, I, I saw this. Stephen sent this in from Seattle. Uh, this is great, a great deal. Uh, yeah. Vintage Tupperware foot bath slash meat defroster slash puke bucket slash potato salad slash popcorn bowl. <laughs> I always love, it's so true. Our puke, I, our puke I, I thought we were just handle. the ones who called it a puke bucket, but no, that's yeah. apparently it's fairly universal, so I love that. You, comes in handy. I mean, this is good deal. as good as it gets. The, the dollar value of this. It's good when you have the popcorn the day after the puke. You just wash it out real good. <laughs> yeah, the, the in-between washing step is kind of uh, important. important. Gross. <laughs> uh, okay, so speaking of gross in a good way, we have talked about um, barbarian spaghetti quite a bit. It's one of our, our things. The idea, if you're new here, is to enjoy a spaghetti dinner 
without plates. Mm -hmm. Now that's, that can be fairly divisive. Some people are like, nope, not doing that at all. Um, other people are like, that sounds like a great idea. I need to do that post taste. Yeah. <laughs> yes. uh, well, I wanted to point out one of our adult itis fighters, Betsy. She goes on Facebook as Betsy Pamela. So I figured I'd just do the same thing. Um, and uh, she shared a barbarian spaghetti. I actually, she had a, the quote she, she posted. I wanted to share that. Was, she said, who says you can't eat spaghetti without silverware? Hashtag not a rule. Hashtag escape at all hood. Hashtag is celebrate everything. Uh, hashtag adventures with Leo. And so Aww. this is the most adorable photo here is they're saying prayers Aww. before <laughs> the uh, dinner. The barbarians. Um, <laughs> yes. Even barbarians. Thank you for this barbarian have, spaghetti. Have manners <laughs> and uh, have perspective. And just in case you didn't couldn't tell, yes, the spaghetti is directly on the is that a cloth? Pla it's a plastic okay. tablecloth, which is what we recommend, yes. right? It makes yes. the cleanup that's easy. Yeah, almost panicking. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if Aww. that's not the most adorable little picture, it's hard to kind of tell, but he's got some spaghetti sauce on his mouth and on his forehead, of course, Normal. naturally. Yep. And uh, he looks like he's having a great time. <laughs> Here's the whole crew. Aww. All of them have a little uh, spaghetti <laughs> sauce on their face. And uh, yeah, so Betsy, thank you for, for doing that. She posted... Family fun, 5,000. Adultitis, negative 100. Aww. That's what I'm talking about. It's pretty yes. good. Pretty good. So Adultitis thank you, fighters unite, Betsy, right? for, uh, for sharing that and for adultitis fighting and for inspiring all of us with your shenanigans. And uh, fun little aside, um, as I was uh, looking on Facebook and clicked through to her profile, to find this post because this happened in February. So okay. it, I had saved it and then I went back to look for it. And around St. Patrick's Day, she had posted a link to Fun Limericks, oh. right? The whole Irish St. Patrick's yeah. Day. Uh, limericks that the whole family can enjoy. And so I had to share a few of them. Oh, sure. Um, there once was a farmer from Leeds who swallowed a packet of seeds. It soon came to pass. He was covered with grass but has all the tomatoes he needs. Oh. <laughs> That's good, right? Yeah. Uh, here's one uh, in honor of our daughter. A bashful young school girl, school girl named Rose is rather ashamed of her nose. She distracts people's stares with the mice that she wears hanging down by their tails from her clothes. <laughs> that uh, seems like a children's book right it there. It does. Uh, a couple more. A creature of charm is the gerbil. Its diet exclusively herbal. It grazes all day on bunches of hay, passing gas with an elegant burble. <laughs> and then this one, my, this might be my favorite one because it reminds me of uh, Shel Silverstein a little bit. A circus performer named Brian once smiled as he rode on a lion. They came back from the ride, but with Brian inside <laughs> and the smile on the face of the lion. All right, we're reading Shel Silverstein before bed today. That is. That so there's your uh, weekly limerick. That's maybe great. that needs oh, to be a wow. Maybe that needs to be a segment. I don't know. Uh, speaking of that, we would love to know uh, from you. Kim mentioned this is our 90th show. If you have an idea of something we should definitely do for our hundredth show, ten shows away, which is coming up quickly, uh, we'd right. love to hear your suggestions. We've got some plans. We've got some ideas. But if you have anything you'd love to see, yeah, what do you think we should or, do, or uh, have any ideas, what drop them in happen? the chat. And uh, let us know. I think we should eat 100 Oreos live. And that would be different from a normal day. How? <laughs> We're not, we don't usually do it in front of people. Well, that's true. <laughs> we just do it after the show. That's right. <laughs> okay, so here is the giveaway question tonight. All you have to do is... Um, Enter your answer to this question in the comments. If you could enjoy a barbarian spaghetti dinner with anyone, living or dead, who would you choose? Ooh. You know, that's a, that's the age-old question. Like, who would you like to have dinner with, living or dead? Who would you like? Yeah. Like, does the barbarian spaghetti thing change it at all? Well, would you love to have? You know who I thought of immediately? Chris Farley. Chris Farley. Wouldn't he be fun yeah. to do the the? We just watched um, Adam Sandler's. Skit from SNL. Uh, uh, Lunch Lady. Lunch Lance, Lady, right. yes. And we're showing the kids and, and Chris Farley appears and 
he's the lunch lady, of course. So he would be fun, wouldn't you think? Yeah, you could have that would some be a good one. Yeah, yeah. Ah, I'm mm -hmm. trying to think. I don't know that I have one that comes to mind immediately. Um, you definitely don't want to stick in the mud. No, it's got to be someone who's right. you're going to have fun with it. You don't want to have to convince uh, them. Probably. Uh, Although it would be kind of fun. Uh, what if I went with uh, Martha Stewart? Oh, like that would <laughs> you'll be, go the opposite. Like if, if, if it's assumed that she would do it and then I could get yeah. a picture for Instagram, oh. <laughs> I'd be, that'd go viral, right? That'd be pretty Would you pretty only sweet. do it because it would go viral or would you like to see her reaction? I, I would love to see her reaction. Yeah. I would love her to be wearing a white pantsuit. Well. <laughs> is that, is that allowed to kind of add that little? With white gloves. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that'd be pretty good. So uh, what do we got here? Let's see. Um. Da, 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 this should be good tonight. This um, should be good. My father-in-law, says Jennifer. Uh, Attila the Hun. Nice. There you go. Nice. Steve says anyone living. Well. Another fun. Attila the Hun. Wow, that's... That's funny. Did they, I wonder how quickly time. that was close to each other. I bet. Uh, here's another one. Robin Williams and Robin Williams. And Robin Great Williams. Minds! Oh, my Mom, gosh! Robin Williams. Right? You think of someone playful. You're like, who am I going to have the most fun with? Uh, Princess right? Diana. That, that is would very, be fun. yeah. Uh, how about if you could add a person, me, Princess Diana, and Mother Teresa? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Which one of these doesn't belong? This guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, Julie Andrews. Andrews, oh. do you think she would do it? See, that is an interesting know, question, Kim. That's Kim. a good question. And is her, her, is her real person persona as proper as her, like... The people she acts as, right? Yeah, it would be like yeah. I would like I would like to eat a barbarian spaghetti with her dressed as Mary Poppins. <laughs> <laughs> Very specific here, uh, Helen, a true barbarian, right? That that would be the Attila, Attila the Hun, right? yeah. Uh, Will Ferrell, yeah. You know he would own it, right? It, oh, yeah. Nick says barbarian spaghetti in a van down by the river. <laughs> yes. You know what I just thought of as Elf when he's eating the spaghetti with the syrup. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty. Yeah. We've the kind difference? of we've kind of seen that we before, have haven't we? Seen it, right? uh, Tyler says Jimmy Fallon. Oh, that would be good. That feels like so that would be a fun. good a good skit on the Tonight Show is Jimmy and guests eating. Why don't we watch spaghetti. him more? He makes me happy because we're asleep by then. Yeah, that's <laughs> mostly why. Uh, what else we got? Oh, here we go. Betty White. Oh, Love that one, Dorothy. That's that a is a one. good one. She would uh, so do that. Dave weighs in. He says, I think Julie Andrews and Carol Burnett would do oh, it. Oh, Carol Burnett. Yeah, yes. she would do it. Original shenanigans. Uh, this right? makes me laugh because I know Sharon. The members of Duran Duran. Oh. <laughs> I feel like she includes Duran Duran into every possible it, poll question. Right? But, you know? Uh, I don't know anything about them to know if that would be a good It doesn't experience. matter. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. <laughs> Ellen says, Bill says, Bill Gates. That would be Wow. That that's, be fun. yeah. I definitely get the sense that he's a, a fork and knife kind of guy when it comes to, yeah. he probably cuts his spaghetti noodles, don't you think? He cuts his Snickers bars. Yeah. Yeah. Like cuts his spaghetti noodles. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Steven oh. says, Paul Tracy and Kara oh, Tracy. There you go. Did. There's a shout out. I want to do that. You know, and if they're not available, Queen Victoria. <laughs> uh, how about Walt Disney? What do you think about? What do you think? Would, would Uncle Walt do it? He was kind of. I feel like he was kind of serious. I don't know. Well, that would be know. interesting, but it would be fun. It would be fun. He's a big dreamer, Shall... but I don't know how playful he was. Is that? Oh, he's playful. Was he playful? Yeah, he's playful. All right, I yeah. gotta watch more. Although he was, he was always really. Clear about making sure like Main Street was always clean. Yeah, was one of the things I that see. was all yeah. about Disney World. Oh, so I don't know. That's a good point. Uh, how about the cast from Fraggle Rock? <laughs> Muppets. How about it? That'd be so messy and awesome. Um, right? What's the one monster? No, animal. Yeah. Rah! Yeah, he's yeah. not from Fraggle Rock, probably. Uh, no, not yeah. at all. <laughs> Nick Offerman. He's a Muppet, though. Give you points for Muppet yeah. <laughs> Muppet identification. Nick Offerman. Kara, yeah. the Kotakis. Oh, let's would, do it. You would never be the same, Kara. What? Why? We haven't done. We did do Barbarian Spaghetti at the second Escape at Hood Summit. We did. And I think it might be time again. Mm -hmm. We'll see. You about never know. That. You never know. Cookie yes. Monster. That would be pretty oh, epic. Again with the fur. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how about uh, Jerry Seinfeld? Yes, he that would be so, fun. That would be fun. Uh, my cousins at Grandma's. Aww, there you go. That would be Lucille fun. Ball. Oh, 
with the chocolate um, stuff in the chocolate. I want to watch that again. Cho- chocolate stuff in the shirt. Jim Gaffigan and family. Nice. That, good. that would be good. Um, this one. Okay, so this is that. fun. Uh, Dorothy says he was on drugs, and I have no idea who she's talking <laughs> about. But it makes me laugh to think who it could have been about. Was she Let's talking say, about Animal? Was she the talking cast about of Fraggle Rock? <laughs> animal. Was she talking about Cookie Monster? The Kotekis? Uh, I don't know. Was she Bill talking Gates? about Bill Gates? I don't know. Paul don't Tracy? Know. Who knows? Who knows? Um, don't clarify. We just yeah, want to. Okay. We just want to. Uh, Friends cast. Oh, Friends cast. Yeah, that would be fun. Uh, Joey from Full House. Uncle Joey. Oh, what was forget his about last it. name. No. Is Uncle that Joey? Bargakamuch or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Nailed it. Bargakamuch. Bar- it was like bar. It was like bakabuch. It was something. Bo- I- <laughs> Help me out. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Bartakamuch. Bartakamuch. <laughs> No, you know what I'm thinking of? Perfect stranger. <laughs> yeah. Belky. Belky. <laughs> Wrong show from the 90s or late 80s? 90s? Late 80s, early 90s. Belky Bartakamooch. <laughs> and he did do the Dance of Joy, which I did pull up on YouTube the other day for Lucy. And we watched like a segment of like 100 Dance of Joys. It was wonderful. Are you guys having a kill? <laughs> Come on, you guys. Uh, what is that thing? even about? What, <laughs> what, what are they voting on? If there is a guy that has that name. The name Balky Bartakabooch? <laughs> no. Joey Gladstone. That, yes. So close. And Jesse Katsopoulos. Uh, Neither of whom were oh, Balky Bartakabooch. I think his of, got, got top of it. <laughs> I, this is water you guys. yeah it's straight vodka uh anywho thank you guys for uh, uh playing with us that went off the rails do you see why i don't play party games it's not pretty you guys don't invite me moving on moving right. on well okay it's time for a prescription it's time to yes. we gave you limerick we gave you some really bad pronunciations of a name <laughs> Um, but now I want to send you off on something hopefully useful. Um, prescription. Talking about pers- per, uh, persistence tonight. Um, when you feel like giving up, look for reasons. It's better to keep going. Mm-hmm. All right. There's your, there's your thought for the week. And we hope that it is on your calendar to join us for the Escape at Hood Summit on August 1st and 2nd in Park City, Utah. It's going to be and a magnificent getaway, beautiful venue, amazing food, and even better people. Please join us. Check it out at escapeatallhoodsummit.com. Yes. But that is it for the show. Yes. Until, Until next, next time, time, Adult Dynasty Fighters. Shine on, spread whimsy, and keep being awesome.